a consequence of the monsoon rains and of course of climate change and uh, such events. Uh, and in Pakistan, monsoons have started. So a lot of occurrences due to these monsoon rains, such as uh, floods and landslides will be occurring. So we'll be talking about that in our program and what is being done for the victims of the most recent flash floods as well as what to do going forward for the country during this monsoon season will be discussed as well. Uh, also in our next segment we will be talking about how uh, the State Bank has released its um, has released its quarterly economic report and has said that 50% of Balochistan's households might be facing severe or mild food insecurity. Now, food insecurity is a result of uh, not being able to provide all the people the the level of nutrition and food that they require all over the country. And these there are disparities which occur between the provinces, uh, the most food insecure being Balochistan and the most food secure being Gilgit Baltistan and Cape so why do these disparities occur when Pakistan is known to be a pretty uh, sufficient, self-sufficient country as far as staple food uh, provision is concerned for its citizens? So we will be discussing that as well in our program. And of course, in our last segment, we'll be discussing about the state of the stock markets today. We'll be talking about how they did and hopefully if there's been any movement up or hopefully up, not down. Uh, let's begin with our program now. Let's speak with our, uh, with our a guest today in the studio, we have with us Brigadier Mukhtar Ahmed, who is a spokesperson for the NDMA, and he is a member of operations. Thank you so much, Brigadier Saab, for being with us today. Um, first of all, I'd like to start with this uh, flash flood that took place in a village in Neelam Valley in Azad, Kashmir. This happened at night, and uh, people were sleeping. There were 22 people killed, mosques, houses, shops were washed away, and 18 of those people were sleeping in a mosque. They were part of a tabligh. They were fast asleep. They had no idea what was going to happen to them. So uh, can you please tell us a bit about how this flash flood happened in such a sudden amount of time that nobody could prepare, nobody could get away? It's the nature of flash floods. Could you please ex uh, explain that to us? Uh, thank you, Shermin, for uh, first of all, for inviting in your program. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have asked about this Neelam Valley incident. Uh, this happened in Leswal mm -hmm. uh, village, uh, Tehsil Atmakam. Uh, where there was uh, Pakistan Med Department issued uh, the uh, warning alert about this uh, happening and this is likely to happen that was issued and we uh, shared it with our uh, state disaster management authority and uh, respective uh, for awareness with other stakeholders that from 13th onward there is likely to be a spell of rain, heavy spell of rains which can cause flooding uh, in the Jhelum River, in the upside of the... Uh, okay, so warnings were given. Yeah, yeah it so was given. So is, is there an issue with the communication that the people living there did not uh, yeah. get the message or they didn't understand what uh, was the In problem? fact, uh, they get the message, but what happens is that uh, this rain forecast, really it is not in belt of Pakistan, it is likely to affect. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's uh, AJK, GB, Upper Punjab area, up to Lahore, uh, Faisalabad division, Gujarawala division, they are likely to be affected. As you must be aware uh, that there was a lot of rain in Lahore uh, yesterday and today. That is also around crossing uh, 150 millimeter figure in some part of the Lahore city. So flash flooding can occur in Lahore as well? Uh, no, not flash flooding. But that flood. is called urban flooding. Urban flooding. Uh, that happens because of the sewerage system and other things choke. This, uh, uh, this year, Interestingly, this um, uh, monsoon contingency plan which we prepare, I was just showing you earlier, uh, this one, this is also based on the seasonal forecast which is issued to us by the Pakistan Med Department. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, in that, that seasonal forecast, they have informed us that there, because of the rise in temperature, there is a likelihood that we face this year, instead of riverine flood, urban flooding, flash flooding, and some hill torrents like in Diji Khan, and other areas. Right. So uh, going back to the incident in Neelam Valley, how many people are still missing? And 29. Is, it, is there any hope for recovering those people? And, uh, we uh, can hope and we can pray that we find some people alive mm -hmm. and uh, still efforts are on. But uh, I have uh, seen uh, some pictures because we have already moved our uh, mobile ops room that is located over there of NDMA. Uh, there are two officers who are continuously reporting us and asking us whatever uh, support is required and we are coordinating from here Islamabad. That is a very deep area mm -hmm. where this water has gone in and uh, is flowing towards the Jhelum River. It is very difficult to find uh, literally on, in that very area, one to two kilometer, that uh, dead bodies might have uh, our bodies uh, uh, 
may Allah save them, uh, might have traveled quite a lot, uh, long distance right. and we have to search the complete uh, belt for that. Resources are mobilized, people are working on it. But uh, let's hope and pray that we find yes, some inshallah. survivors of that. And how about the people uh, who are still affected in the area? What uh, provisions have been made for them? Are there relief camps set up, uh, shelter, yes. food, housing and things like that? Uh, immediately uh, after uh, this immediate rescue and uh, relief activity which we carried out, after that four camps have been established. Uh, two for the survivors, uh, uh, all those persons whose uh, houses are damaged and they have no shelters, they have moved into the shelters, uh, okay. 200 tents and blankets with the sleeping bags they have been provided and food items have been moved from uh, SDMA and Pakistan Army has also provided uh, some food items and tomorrow uh, we are also uh, have planned flying some food item through a helicopter uh, to Laswal uh, village where we can drop them and we can see aerial view of that um, uh, where we could uh, really uh, have some more resources in finding the survivors. Right, okay, so now let's get into this season, it's monsoon season and every year we see floods, every year we see flash mm. floods or especially floods we've seen uh, before as well. So, and then you have heavy rains in the cities, urban flooding that you had mentioned. So, what are the provisions that we are taking this year uh, as far as NDMA is concerned and the provincial coordination that's required mm. as well as the local level uh, pre preparedness? How well prepared are we for these monsoons? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, when the monsoon season starts, it is from July till uh, January, September, if there is no early spell predicted, we uh, two to three months earlier, we start uh, uh, preparation. First of all, we uh, start with the provincial level, we uh, carry out the uh, resource mapping and what uh, life jackets, boards and other okay. things are available and uh, with the support of armed forces, we carry out the recce of the flood protection bun, all, the, all these buns are okay, okay or they need some support. So we carry out all these kind of preparation. These are very extensive preparation. And then we carry out the mock exercises at the district level uh, with the uh, board, fl uh, flood boards and OBM operators and they uh, apply their boards into the water and they test the equipment so that when it is needed, it should function. Right. Repair and maintenance is carried out. And then uh, district disaster management authority uh, prepare their contingency plan that how they are going to respond and what resources they have. Official resources with the rescued uh, resources and the local resources. They muster it up and made, uh, make the plan. And then the armed forces which are responsible for the dis, uh, respective district, they also coordinate with the civil administration. And then at provincial level, these coordination are done. Chief minister or disaster management minister of respective province, they chair those meetings and then they prepare the contingency plan of the province. Right. And then it, this process is repeated at the federal level with all uh, four provinces and two authorities of uh, state disaster and GB disaster. Right. Authority. So the communities which are vulnerable to say flash flooding, do they have, uh, can their homes be moved away from danger areas? Do we have any uh, air zone that they should <coughs> not be building houses on near rivers and things like that so in order to protect them from very, such events? A very important point which you have raised. Uh, community is a very important uh, part, uh, those who can play in the disaster mitigation mm -hmm. by years, we can save their lives. But unfortunately, uh, there are uh, areas in the flood plains, in the nullahs, uh, where they build their houses in the dangerous uh, mm -hmm. areas because of the uh, earning livelihood and other uh, issues which are prevailing in our society. We do ask uh, district disaster management authorities and deputy commissioners to ask them to vacate these areas before um, uh, before the flood or some water uh, warning is given to them. But unfortunately, uh, there are problems uh, when even the water uh, started uh, started moving in those areas. So then we have to move the police and the armed forces to request them to ask them to vacate those areas and move to the safer places. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when there is no water, there is no flooding, uh, the people uh, start grow, uh, agriculture activity in that, uh, that area, grow the, uh, in the fields. So that these are the areas for which uh, Pakistan and uh, Federal Flood Commission uh, is preparing a river act mm -hmm. uh, which would prohibit uh, these people to reside inside the dangerous areas like in the flood plains and other uh, areas. Right, then uh, they can be relocated safely. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. And can the houses, if the people aren't moving or if it's not in too much of a danger zone, can the structures be made stronger as well? 
Uh, this is again a very important point uh, that building safety codes, this mm -hmm. is a very important subject uh, that uh, we need to, uh, we have the building safety codes that uh, what kind of structures uh, should be built in, in those areas, different for different areas like for uh, northern areas is different, for the plains of Punjab and mm -hmm. Sindh it is different. So what kind of safe buildings uh, should be constructed mm -hmm. so that in case of heavy rains, monsoon or something like that happen or earthquake jolts. And they uh, they remain safe, but unfortunately, these are uh, the, there are building safety codes, but they are not implemented. There is a requirement of legislation on that that they should be strictly implemented uh, in those areas. Absolutely. Yeah. So the urban flooding that we were speaking about earlier, which there is a risk of going forward, that is made worse. It's exacerbated by plastic bags congesting the sewage exactly. systems and, and exactly. nalas and things like that. So plastic bags are a big issue here as well. Exactly. So in fact, in the urban flooding, and the main <coughs> source of urban flooding is this garbage mm -hmm. because our sewage system, which is in some of the areas which are quite old, uh, like in, uh, in in the interior uh, Lahore area or the, in the Karachi area, if you could ask, uh, in the Gujar Nala and other, there, there is a huge piles of garbage. Uh, these are of the, uh, the shoppers and uh, shopping bags and these things. And these are the one which really block the sewage system yeah. and block uh, these Nalas and flow of water and that caused the urban flooding. So what, and do you, the, what do you think, sir, that should they be completely banned or should their use be limited to some extent? Yes, uh, there is some legislation required in this regard mm -hmm. because uh, legislation and then strict implementation of that. Uh, uh, one more thing I would like to highlight, these waterways which are uh, in, the, in, in the cities like Lai Nala and Rawalpindi and other smaller Nalas and Rawalpindi which start from flowing from Islamabad down to, uh, to Rawalpindi, same there are 29 Nalas in, uh, in Karachi. Mm -hmm. The flow of water has to be made free, there should be no obstruction, there should be no construction in that area. As you must, might be knowing it, there are many illegal constructions in these areas. Mm -hmm. They stop the flow of water and then uh, there is a problem for the complete community, right. they suffer. That for that very purpose, a strict uh, administrative rules and instructions for construction of houses and that need to be implemented by district right. authorities. So uh, going forward in this summer, now people are going to be traveling, <coughs> they're going to be tourists going to the northern areas and uh, with the monsoons and the rains and flood uh, risks and all of that, what should travelers be wary of and how can they keep themselves and their families safe? Yeah, exactly. This is very important. Sometime uh, we see that uh, some incident has happened in the uh, GB and the northern areas uh, and uh, beside we are helping the locals, there are many tourists, tourists uh, exactly. they are okay. uh, trapped inside. Uh, but for that uh, we uh, issue uh, the alerts, uh, we uh, inform the people generally on our social media website and others that people need to check uh, uh, this weather alerts and others before, uh, before, before traveling. Travel. Uh, so that they are aware that this this spell is likely to happen in this in this in these many areas, and that that can affect our travel plan. Mm -hmm. So that would be very uh, ideal um, situation that if they travel um, after seeing uh, the Pakistan Med Department some alerts if they are particularly alert, because uh, fortunately or unfortunately in Pakistan uh, leave uh, children's leave and other things they also coincide with these uh, this time yeah. of the monsoon. And people like to travel uh, with families in these good serene areas of Pakistan to, yes. uh, to show their children. But uh, some t uh, sometime if they are trapped inside this kind of uh, spells, then there is a difficulty for them and difficulty for us also to rescue them from their Okay, areas. so do you suggest that they avoid these time periods then? Uh, the uh, check up on the weather. Weather system. alert, if they could mm. uh, continuously see the weather alert, that would be very fine. Uh, right. uh, although the traveling can't, can't be banned for three months. Right. And yeah. uh, can you, uh, what do you think about uh, community and like voluntary based organizations in communities and in cities and all to help in such incidences? Can their capacity be increased and built upon as well? Uh, in, in case of any disaster uh, in any country, the first respond, uh, response comes from the community level. Yeah. We, need to, uh, we need to educate our people, we need to train our children uh, that how to behave in, in such kind of situation and they should be trained and they should be made aware and they should be uh, really 
part of uh, the disaster management structure that how they could help their uh, community. For this I can uh, give you very good example. In Gilgit, Baltistan, uh, there is a very good uh, community training programs uh, which is uh, Aka carry out, Aga Khan foundation mm -hmm. they carry out and they train the people. Yes. They, are, uh, they are really very helpful when this kind of situation comes. They are uh, trained to give the first aid and other things and, and their uh, boy scouts are very active yeah they are very active yeah. so that kind of such, uh, things should be uh, should be made in curriculum and other things uh, in in other part of uh, pakistan and uh, some organization as you were referring like uh, prcs uh, pakistan red crescent uh, society uh, and there are rescue double one double two and other department they are having some volunteers on their list to help them uh, to really uh, uh, to community in case of any disaster situation. Right, and in this situation, this particular situation in Neelam Valley, there's a, a communication issue going on as well with the locals <coughs> because they yes. don't have landlines and some of them don't have the use of mobile phones. So, how can communication mm -hmm. systems be made better in uh, all across Pakistan, and so that such incidences can be addressed right away? Like some of the villagers are saying, uh, I was watching a news clip earlier that they don't have water and nobody's gotten to them yet. Clearly, there's some communication. <laughs> gap there how can that be more streamlined uh, in fact in, in case of any any such kind of eventuality uh, there are two three uh, problems which really emerge one is road communication that mm -hmm. is disrupted and people are isolated second is the overall uh, uh, cellular communication that mm -hmm. is disturbed and then are the health issues and uh, medical issues in this case Neelam Valley issue also uh, road were disrupted but immediately we requested FW, they moved their machinery, you must have seen in some clips and they have restored some kind of uh, traffic today. Mm -hmm. And for communication, uh, special communication or organization that is called SCO which is responsible, they immediately uh, moved and mobilized uh, their teams uh, to, uh, to fix the towers which has been destroyed uh, during this time. Right. And same is with the health teams, uh, they also move the health teams. Right. So, uh, in addition to the number of people who've lost their lives, there's also 50 houses that were damaged and uh, 100 others were affected also according to official reports, but then there are unofficial reports saying higher numbers and yes. all. So, you know about the building damage and the people's uh, loss of uh, people's lives as well as uh, the other damage that they've had to their property. Now, in addition to that, such uh, climatic or environmental uh, events, such disasters also cause health problems. They cause health disasters <coughs> as well when you have water polluted, for example. How do we approach that from, how do we prevent that from happening now? Um, in case, um, immediate... And also to provide <coughs> proper medical facilities, disease-free environments for these yeah. people. Uh, for medical and <coughs> food, immediately uh, we have, uh, we maintain the stocks at the district level, at the uh, at the provincial level and the backup is maintained by the NDMA. Clean drinking water uh, stock. Uh, yeah, bottled water. Mm -hmm. Uh, for in, in such kind of emergency, we provide the uh, we ask the district authorities and others to provide the clean drinking water mm -hmm. uh, immediately, so that the problem uh, is addressed uh, for uh, uh, till the time they are in the camps. Mm -hmm. But when uh, when uh, they move out from the camps, then uh, we have to arrange uh, through the provincial disaster management authority uh, with a safe uh, drinking water by uh, having the filtration plants. Uh, established over there. Okay. But fortunately in our uh, Kashmir area there are very good uh, flow of water from the uh, from the nalas and from the mountains. We can have it with a little treatment with putting the tablets inside uh, to making it safe for the drinking. So all those uh, preparations are already Yes, in we place. know and we keep it uh, ready these tablets, uh, purification tablets and we put it in the water so that for immediate and emergency need for 72 hours uh, two to three days we can use that and then the system is restored. Right, and uh, these monsoon rains and, and the effects uh, caused by them, especially disasters and all, are regional because you, you're having uh, problems, uh, disasters taking place, mudslides and um, uh, torrential rains causing issues in Bangladesh, India, um, Nepal, all over the region. So it's a regional phenomenon and uh, every year we're all facing them and now it's being exacerbated by climate change as you yes. were saying earlier. So the 
uh, effects of climate change that we are expected now to face. Now, this is a huge, huge um, issue that NDMA will have to face as well because it increases the risk for all kinds of natural disasters, especially these types, floods and landslides and things and such, and glacier bursts and uh, the you know, heavy rains and stuff like that. So how are we preparing, for example, for uh, future food security, our, our rainfall patterns are going to be changing and things like that as well. How are farmers and agriculture protected? Okay. Uh, for uh, your first part of question about what the disaster risk reduction measures uh, we need to take, yeah. I think the government uh, is taking very good steps uh, on the two account. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the tree plantation. Mm -hmm. uh, for tree plantation, yes. you, uh, uh, you really address uh, this climate change mm -hmm. issue. And one, uh, this landslide and other things and this uh, glove incident, if we have sufficient trees uh, on, these, mm, on these mountains, they can stop these boulders, they can stop the landslides because trees help a lot. We have seen the best practices in Switzerland, Bangkok and other countries uh, for, uh, to control this climate change and to control these kind of disasters, tree is the best solution. Uh, as many trees we could grow, they would help uh, uh, to really address the issues. Mm -hmm. One, and second is that we need to have the uh, we uh, we already have the awareness that uh, we need to construct more dams, mm -hmm. smaller dams, yes. bigger dams, <clears throat> and uh, we need to conserve this precious water. And this is used for agriculture because a, a normal farmer in the southern Punjab or in the Balochistan or in the Sindh area spending a lot of money. Uh, to uh, to bring out the water from uh, groundwater. If he has a uh, spare water available through canal system, through irrigation system, he can benefit more. Right, absolutely. Thank <laughs> you so much, Brigadier Mukhtar Rehma. Thank, Thank you for giving us your Thank insights you. and all the information. This is very important for the public to see. <clears throat> and viewers, stay with us. After the break, we'll be talking about the food security issues that uh, the recent state bank report has said uh, could be the worst in Balochistan in the upcoming years. Stay with us and we'll be discussing that with our guests.